is not to solve all the possible questions and check. We are here, we want to say basically that if I were in your shoes and if I were writing the exam, then what exactly are the things that I will do? As I had said in my mail that we are going to find the easy questions from the tough ones. We are going to uh, look at what what are the things that makes a question a difficult question, right? So we will start here. I think we are all good to go. Everyone is all set. The session is getting recorded here, so I would upload it. But I would I want you to attend the session here because while recording, many a time some 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 uh, part of the video does not get captured, and that way you might miss on the critical things. Okay, people. So if you look at this first question, this is how I start my section. My section starts here. It says me the five sentences are given and I know that it's a theta question. Correct, people? And I know that this is a theta question and this theta question has five sentences. And what happens the moment I see this? I, I, I would not waste my time in theta PJ because the reason is the chances are that uh, the chances are that I may get it wrong. And I will at least, it will take five minutes for me to arrive at the answer. I know this is a doable question. How do I come to know this is a doable question? I have many hints in this question, which shows that we, it is easy for me to uh, connect the ideas. Look at the pronoun him. Look at by contrast. And uh, look at this, the pronoun, this is fantastically weird. So even if I have to solve this question, these are the three hints that can actually work for me, but I would not waste my time right at the start of my exam doing something which is theta. I would rather wait, let me go through the other things and then come back to this. So I would hold on for a while. Yes, I would keep it for review and I will go to the next question, correct? The next question, similar question and similar kind of question. It has, it has five sentences and again it says this area, it says the name, it says Maurice hypothesis, it says the uncanny valley. Correct. And it has the word how, however. Again, there are lots and lots of things which I can connect and uh, and which, which I can connect and get the right answer. But again, I know that there are five sentences and it will at least take me four minutes to arrive at the right answer. And still the chances of, the, of, of my getting this question correct are very low. So I would again, you know, hold on for a while. Let me see if, if, if everything is of a similar kind. And I will go to the next question. Right. And now here, now I would always be tempted to solve this kind of question. Why? You might ask why. The reason is because the sentences are short. And secondly, uh, there are not, why is not clear? I think everyone can hear me, people. Please, please log in and then uh, log out and then, and then, and then, yes, log in. So if you look at the sentence, people, I would try to solve this question. Why? Because the sentences are short. And I would say, this refers to they. So what can it refer to? It can refer to basically people. So uh, they use tools. Only people can use tools, right? So I can say that these are the five residents and uh, it must be referring to they here. So I can say that there has to be a sequence with one and then preceding one, we have statement five, correct? This can be one of the sequence. So uh, how would I start representative of these artifacts? So I can't start with two, I can't start with one, I can't even start with five because I don't know who the they residents are. I would start with three. It says the earliest traces of people on the Isle of Man can be found as far back as the Mesolithic period, also known as the Middle, Middle Stone Age. Now, what will come after this? I can have, I can have uh, the first residents lived in small natural shelters, hunting, fishing and gathering for their food, right? Or these have been found near the coast. Now look at the problem people, how this question turns out to be a very, very dubious question or something which really creates problem. These could refer to basically uh, uh, the, uh, the, so I would say, let's start with three and then I would say the earliest traces of people. So can I say traces could refer to these here or these could refer to traces? So I will say, Let's start with three and then go to four. Uh, the earliest traces of people on the Isle of Man can be found as far back as Mesolithic period, also known as Middle Stone Age. These have been found near the coast. What refers to these? Traces, correct? Traces have been found, correct? After this, what I can say? The first residents lived in small natural shelter. The earliest traces and therefore the first residents, correct? We will come to that as well. Don't worry. So I would go to three, four, five. And we can say that the first residents use tools. So I can say three, four, five, one, and then the representative of these artifacts. 
what could these artifacts be these artifacts can nothing be but small tools of flint and bone so only these can be artifacts right i will come to that people so so three five three four five one two is likely to be the sequence is there any other possibility there is one more possibility i can start with three the earliest traces of people on the isle of man can be found right and then i can say the residents right i can say the residents lived in small natural shelters hunting fishing and gathering for their tools correct three five and then i can say these have been found near the coast what can these refer to the first residents lived in small natural shelters hunting fishing and gathering for their food these could refer to basically small natural shelters so i can say three five four and then i can say they used right small tools and then i can say there is one more sequence three four five one two three five four one two correct and there, there can be one more sequence and i can say let's start with three correct and uh, no there is no other sequence possible so these two are the possible sequence right people which one do you think is more logical i have given i have already given three four minutes to it both seem logical can you say that these could not refer to traces these can refer to only shelters we don't know it could refer to shelters it could refer to but logically i am speaking people understand logically would you find traces of course i can find traces right the earliest traces of people on the isle of man can be found right and then these have been uh, but then people uh, when i say 3 and 4 don't they create some kind of redundancy because the traces can be found as far back as mesolithic period and then you say these have been found near the coast so once you say the traces can be found as far this traces is basically not i mean you say the traces can be found back to the mesolithic period and then the same traces can be found near the coast it's it sounds a bit of redundant sentence are you getting my point people the first traces refers to as far back as the mesolithic period and the same traces can be found in the coast as well so this is slightly awkward why because on the one hand you say the traces can be found as far back as mesolithic on the other hand you say that the traces can be found near the coast so that means basically the author is trying to convey two different pieces of information and that's why i feel of course so what do we get from this people that while doing the question i feel that i am taking more than 4 minutes but i am having difficulty arriving at the answer so what should i do as a result i always say that when you are struggling for more than 3 minutes you can take a call you can say okay let's have 3 5 4 1 2 but i would say the answer is not crystal clear the answer is not crystal clear and therefore i always tell my students that theta is some, the oa the oa is 3 5 4 1 2 3 5 4 1 2 is the oa and difficult question so the moment i get into the theta stuff i get caught all the time so my point is that what lesson we learn here is don't start your 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 uh, session with with a theta question ye 35 ye 35 35 is 35142 or 35412 but what we get to know is that it's a difficult question we are not able to arrive at the answer so quickly this is what we are learning so i will go to the next question right and the next question basically is the Uh, is the rc so okay i know that there is there is an rc which has uh, question number 4 the studio approach okay you can see after fair fair now here i don't have a theta question i will come to question number 9 i know that there is one rc and i will try to first scan all the theta questions now look at this here it says that or i what i would do in your place i would go back and i would see okay let me read the passage and try to solve the questions correct people so let's start with the rc i am going in the right order or i can go with the odd one out but i would like to see the i would like to see all the va questions first because i have enough time to okay so i would like to see the va questions first it says that i have to find the odd sentence now this question says science appears to decrease our insignificance the more we learn about the universe the more insignificant we seem our significance lies not in our size the stuff that we are made of electrons protons we live on a small planet so it says we are made up of this we live on a small planet and then it says science appears to decrease our insignificance our significance so significance insignificance we are made up of we live on a small planet again it looks very much a difficult question 
but we can still try to find the right answer. How would you start the paragraph? You would say, okay, so let's start with this. Uh, the stuff we are, we live on a small planet around a small star, right? Yes, I'm reading the paragraph because what I'm doing is I'm reading the sentence. I'm trying to create, I'm trying to create the connection first. So I get a feeling that there is one thing which says what we are made up of. Then it says we live on a small planet. So these sentences both speak of what we are. And these two sentences speak about the significance and the insignificance part of it. So I again, I am, I'm, I'm again not able to latch on to the exact answer, but I will start saying that, okay, we live on a small planet around a small star in an average size galaxy. And the stuff we are made up of comprise of a small fraction of what fills the universe. So 4, 3 can be one idea, right? And then you say our significance lies not in our size relative to the rest of the cosmos, but rather in how different we are. So on the one hand, you say that you are very small, you are nothing. And science appears to decree our, our insignificance. So I would start always with sentence one. Because it says the sentence one is a broad idea. It says here science appears to decree our insignificance. Why insignificance? Because we are very small. We are insignificant. We are nothing. The more we learn about the universe, the more insignificant we seem. Correct? And then it says we live on a small planet. So we are insignificant. We live on a small planet. Small size people. We are made up of small things. So what I get basically is that 143 is going in the same direction and forms basically a kind of coherent idea having similar message. But when I come to 2, it says here our significance lies not in our size, but in a how different we are. So all of a sudden, the author takes a U-turn and says, you know, the significance lies not in our size, but what we are made up of. So what I get a feeling is that this can be basically a, a continuation of the idea the answer has to be two because statement one, statement three and statement four, they all speak that we are basically insignificant. We are small. It's a small fraction and we are around a small star. We are very ordinary people. So after spending around seven to eight, ten minutes, I get at least one question correct or I am likely to get at least one question correct because I confidently, though this question is not easy, I have picked the first question which appears to be okay manageable so even if i have taken even if i have taken yes i would start with one then go to four and then go to three and then i feel that two is basically the odd one why because one two three, one three and four they form one 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 composite idea so my point is that after spending almost seven to eight minutes i have found that one question is doable Why electrons, protons and neutrons are a part of science. Your universe is a part of science. So you cannot say that science is different. In fact, science basically, we will come to that. Don't worry about this. We are simply doing the question. We are just running through the, uh, the, the entire RC. Galaxy is also a part of your uh, science and universe. So don't say uni science is one thing, universe is another thing and electron, proton and neutron is another thing. This, this cannot be the logic. In fact, the author's attitude with respect to uh, V is very important. In all the sentences, he says, uh, the more significant V seem here. Then you say, we live on a small planet. Then you say, we are made up of. And then he says that how different we are. So in all the questions, he is discussing the human being. But in statement one, three and four, he discusses the human being's insignificance. While in statement two, he discusses the human being's significance. And that's why two becomes the odd one out. Let's take this one now. Again, this is a very simple question and you can easily get this question done. How many of you would say that this is a difficult question? How many of you can say this is a difficult question? How would you start? Few people would consider proudly announcing that they are bad at writing. Why do smart people enjoy say, saying that they are bad at math? This communal math hatred may seem rather innocuous. So I feel that two, three and four forms a paragraph. And one is basically the odd one out. Correct. One is easily the odd one out. So I have seen that there are two questions back to back which I can get correct. One is question number nine. The other is question number ten. I am first running through the VA part. Let me pick the easy ones quickly. I am anyways not touching. Please like explain this one. How do you start the paragraph? So uh, this communal hatred, right? So where is this hatred people? 
The hatred is seen in three. Why do smart people enjoy saying that they are bad at math? This is the hatred. And what is the broad idea? How do you open the paragraph? Few people, few people would consider proudly announcing that they are bad at writing or reading. And then why do smart people enjoy saying that they are bad at math? Why not to? See, working on working on mathematical skills is not unlike a practicing a sport. Neither can be learned or by watching others perform the activity, and both require encouragement and effort. So, what is how how does it connect with the other three sentences or other two sentences? When I I can't connect one with four because there is no hatred as such. I cannot connect one with two because 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 being bad at maths and working on mathematical skills are two different things. So I am having difficulty connecting one with the other two. See, few people would consider math the you I mean few people would say they are bad at writing or reading, but they won't mind saying that they are bad at math. This is basically how the logic is. Writing and reading and mathematics are three different activities concerned with learning. So the author says, the author says, few would consider uh, uh, proudly uh, announcing that they are bad at writing or reading because they think that it is. I mean, I mean, I mean, they would not be proud of saying this, but they would, they would pr uh, proudly say that they are bad at maths. This is basically how the logic is. So what happens? You say, okay, fine. So two, three, four forms a coherent paragraph, and one is basically where because it is not connecting with the, any of the, any of the sentences. You say that working on mathematical skills is not unlike practicing a sport. That means they are two different things. So my point is that haven't we got ninth and tenth question two easy questions and we can manage at the starting ten minutes these two questions. And I'm still looking at the paper, people. Please understand that you are you must devote some time to basically scanning the entire paper. And in the process of scanning, you have to pick those questions which can be done. And then I will go to the next part. So I know that there is next again we have an RC. So I will just scroll down quickly and I will go to uh, let's say again you have a difficult thing. It says theta grammar. Would you like to do this kind of a question, people? Of course, if you have enough time, you can quickly. But then it's theta grammar. You know you have to mark the answers here and nothing, and you have to mark the answer in order. All the of them can have the error. None of them can have the error. Only two can have the error. So I would rather not bother about it, and I would go to the next part. Correct. I would quickly go to the next part, and I know that okay, there are so many questions, and then again an RC, and then I come again uh, to, I have almost scanned half the paper, and then I come to the next thing. The paper is uploading just a moment. I come to the twenty-fourth question. It says here that completes the paragraph appropriately. So again, I let me have a look at this question. Yes, how many people? This is again. I read it. Fear is the fact. Fear is in fact a major component of the act of parenting. A parent, after all, is the steward of another creature's life. A creature who is in the beginning is more helpless than the newborn of a newly other species. This causes a lot of parents to spend a lot of their parenting energy simply being scared. The problem is that they are often scared of the wrong things. It is not their fault. Separating facts from rumors is always hard work, especially for busy parents. So the author is very sympathetic. Sympathetic, he says, separating facts from rumors is always hard work, especially for busy parents. Then he might say, but it is up to the parents to be smart consumers. I don't know what is basically smart consumer. Okay, so smart consumer means he wants to separate. Uh, I mean, the author expects the parent to be good at separating facts from fiction, and therefore the author says you must be a smart consumer and not to be taken in by every parenting. Fine, it's all right. Let me go to the next one now. This fear can sometimes be so over overwhelming that parents start indulging in some of the following self-destructive habits. Again, I feel okay. Fine, this can be a good continuation. What I realize basically is that it is not standing out clearly, and the white noise generated by the so-called parenting expert is so overwhelming that they can barely think for themselves. And the white noise generated by so-called parenting expert is so overwhelming. Okay, now what I get when I read all the four options, people, I feel that this is taking me nowhere. I can again read the question. I get a feeling that okay, this is not as easy as it seems because the entire paragraph speaks about the fear of students. Oh, uh, sorry, fear of parents. Fear is in fact a major component of parenting. A parent is the steward of another life. 
which is helpless this causes a lot of parents to spend a lot of their parenting energy simply being scared right the problem is that the answer is uh, is is i think c the answer is c but i i feel that this is a difficult question because i am not able to connect any of the sentences logically it says but it is up to the parents to be smart consumers why not this uh, it says this fear this fear can sometimes okay the fear is basically dominating the passage so why can't this be the right answer and then white noise so i get a feeling that what is white white noise how from where this is white white noise coming in so i would not so basically after spending almost one and a half two minutes i get a feeling that i am not arriving at the right answer i would simply let it go and then i will come to the next question it says here for me now this is an easy question here for me as for a lot of middle class kids getting into college was more or less the meaning of life when i was growing up what was i a student to do that well meant to be good at grades why did one have to get good grades to get into a good college and why did one want to do that there seemed to be several reasons you would learn more get better jobs make more money but it didn't matter exactly what the precise benefits would be so what mattered the author says it didn't matter what the precise benefits would be and then you say then what what exactly mattered now you say uh, college didn't necessarily have any practical benefits now this cannot be the right answer because i can easily throw it out on the one hand the author says that you would learn more you would get better jobs you make more money but he says it didn't matter exactly what precise benefits would be so he is going in a positive direction on the one hand he says that lots of lots of benefits are there and then you say that it didn't have any practical benefits and then he says though the actual benefits once may have been negligible here you say that there were no practical benefits here you say the benefits were negligible in both the cases i feel that this is not what the author would say the author is basically talking in a very positive tone about the benefits of college life so i would say a good college was the promised land that every student aspired to getting into one or was sure to improve your life so it didn't matter what exactly were the precise benefits but one thing is quite certain it was bound to improve your life he says that there were many benefits you would learn more you would get better jobs you would make more money but what exactly was the precise benefit would not matter why because overall it was bound to improve your life in short so one looks to be a very good continuation why because the author is maintaining the positivity and he's summing up the benefits saying yes everything can be summed up by saying that you are going to basically get something out of it but when you say not getting into a good college would severely reduce your options now the problem is the author is maintaining a positive tone he is maintaining an assertive tone throughout the paragraph understand this people you have to maintain tone consistency as well that is equally important he says for me a lot as for a lot of other people getting into a good college was important what was i a student that meant to do well and get good grades one is the answer of course and i think this is a doable question so how many questions are do how many doable questions we have seen so far we have seen four doable questions the two uh, odd sentence question and the two uh, Uh, the two para completion questions and there is one more para completion question immediately after this and this is the easiest of all the question how do i find this perhaps for the first time though not for the first time not for the first time for the first time now i must ensure that whether it is the first time or whether it is not the first time so this thing basically makes my job easy because the moment i know this is not the first time i can kick out two options how to eliminate people option option 3 in the previous question was all about tone consistency the author is maintaining a positive tone so you have to ensure that he must he says that the precise benefits was not known but there was one benefit the previous question i am talking about now look at this as digital storage capacities reach seemingly boundless proportions some thinkers are becoming nervous about the unintended consequences certainly google's enormous reserves of user information stored in dozens of secretive data centers across the world and the literally photographic memory of the internet archive preserves billions of defunct web pages for posterity means what for the future generation are enough to have to, to leave anyone rattled new forms of memory now what the author says new forms of memory right then how can you say not for the first time on the one hand you say new forms of memory and then you say not for the first time 
as their reach grows as their reach grows as their reach grows as their reach grows scholars are asking scholars are asking scholars are asking scholars are asking defunct 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 means of no use whatsoever it says here perhaps for the first time so if you look at is it for the first time or not for the first time for what do you have more evidence you tell me do we have evidence for the first time or do we have evidence not for the first time why because there is new forms of memory so if this is new forms of memory then definitely it is for the first time and therefore i can kick out option b i can kick out option c we need to find ways to forget we need to find ways to cope with this onslaught you know what is onslaught onslaught basically means attack now the author says that we must find ways to forget defunct pages are being preserved defunct pages means no longer in use so what is the best answer one is the best choice one is the best choice you can't mark any other answer why because i don't see any 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 onslaught going on in the passage onslaught basically means attack onslaught happens on the border between the two armies india and pakistan how can you say that uh, the defunct to cannot be why because how can you say this is not for the first time amia we have been discussing this i told you that if it is new form then how can you say it is not for the first time so can i say how many questions i have managed people so far i have managed five questions so far and five questions basically means you can manage 5 into 3 15 marks so in the very first in the very first half an hour not even half an hour i think there are uh, we have just finished 20 minutes discussing these things so it's not a bad start for someone because yes we have we have just invested 15 minutes and by looking at all the va questions we get a feeling that there are five va questions which are easily manageable and then you have after can sc come in cat okay then it we have come again we have rcs and towards the end again we have two very stupid questions and that is a uh, word usage look at this we have two word usage questions farce again it is a theta form of question very difficult because you may get it you may not get it it says here it says here in the following question a word has been used in sentences in four different ways identify the sentence in which the usage of the word is incorrect so farce has been used it says here uh, and key in the number of corresponding only to that sentence if the word has been used correctly in all the sentences indicate your answer as five a word has been used identify the way in which the usage of the word is incorrect or inappropriate of course it can come we don't know farce means comedy so to farce means to be comic the play was a farce means ridiculous comedy the meeting between the management and his employees union was a farce so again so all look they all basically are look correct sad farce sad comedy i don't know what it means one is correct yes one it can be used as as a but then i would not take the risk people see it is a theta question so i can mark one or i can mark four i can say that we go i may get it right i may get it wrong but at least it is not going to it's not time consuming understand there are certain questions in which i must gamble why because they are not time consuming so i can just mark one or four without it. correct it is not worth spending time on theta understand this so even if this is this is costing you let's say 30 seconds quickly read it if you feel like marking one which is anyways incorrect you can mark one or you can mark four if you mark four your answer is correct if you mark one your answer is incorrect so if you're lucky you will get one question correct there is no negative correct there is no negative so you can take the risk of marking the answer because at least you have to mark only one answer there is no need for you to queue in the way it is like uh, in theta 3 2 1 4 5 you know it's theta parallel how would you you will take time for, for arranging so look at the next one now again the same thing he is so rich that he is he drives custom built car it looks good so this is this is again the small grocery shops have a lost of have have a lost of a custom since supermarket chains i don't know what it means lost of a, have lost a lot of custom it is the custom in india so again this is correct so i get a feeling that 2 and 4 can be the answer she had so little free time recently that she had to give up her custom 
it looks like habit but says you have to give up the custom again so i feel like i would mark four but there is one more option says that if all are correct you have to mark five take a call take a call and just go ahead so at least you will take one minute and within that one minute you can mark these two questions you may get both correct there is nothing wrong you will not lose anything and if you get one of this correct then at least you will get something so my point is that i have taken 30 minutes to run through in fact not 30 minutes if you look at technically if 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 we exact answer the answer for the for, uh, for the previous one is 4 and for this one it is 5 so we have taken around 15 to 17 minutes to go through all the theta questions and what has happened in these 15 17 minutes we have spotted at least five questions which are doable so tell me is it a bad strategy people is it a bad strategy it's not a bad strategy I, there is no reason why four people four is because it is they say it is correct i don't know you can go and have a look at the dictionary see there are questions for which there is no logical explanation word usage is one kind of question the word is used correctly so it is used correctly there is no logic behind it my point is that people after spending 70 see people look at the crux of the matter don't ask all those questions why this why not that my point here is we have assembled not to discuss the questions we have assembled here to check that how what exactly can we do but it is difficult yes it is it is uh, it is it is difficult for you to predict the difficulty that's why i say that as and when you come across the question try solving it The only thing you can rely on is that if you are able to solve, go ahead. If you can't solve, leave it. Go to the next question. So after spending around 20 minutes, we have found that 5 questions, 15 to 17 minutes we have spent and we have found that 5 questions from the verbal ability part, very, very much doable. And then now we will go to the RC part. Now let me scroll the paper up and we have come to the main thing and that is the RCs. Correct? Okay. Shall I read the passage for you people or have you all gone through the passage? If you get only, so how much are you expecting Johnny Depp? If you get only 5 in 15 minutes, you become restless. That means you think that in 15 minutes you should get 10. I will read the passage for you, okay, people. I will read it very patiently and just be patient now. A flow of digital information changes the way people and organizations work and the way commerce is conducted across organizational boundaries. Internet technologies also will change the boundaries of organizations of all sizes. In changing the boundaries, the web work style of using digital tools and processes enables both organizations and individuals to redefine their roles. So the author says basically that uh, using web style, web, web work style of using digital tools enables both organizations to, to, to redefine their roles. Okay. So the first paragraph is pertaining digital information and how the web, the web work style with the help of internet can be used to redefine roles, right? So this is the intro. So I will go to the next one now. A corporation can use the internet to work seamlessly with professionals such as ABC who come outside the corporate walls. An important re-engineering principle is that companies should focus on their core competence. The author says companies should focus on their core competencies and, outs and outsource everything else. The internet allows a company to focus far more than in the past by changing with which employees by changing which employees work within the walls and which work outside in an adjunct, consulting or partnering role. Our core competencies at Microsoft are creating high volume software products, working with other software companies and providing customer service support. We outsource a number of functions, the author says. Okay, so the first paragraph is about digital thing and the second paragraph is about out outsourcing. We don't know. We'll, we will, I'm just reading the passage. Now, don't come to all those inferences in between. Read along with me and try to gather what I'm saying, people. Adjunct means basically... Uh, of secondary to not primary the web style the, the the web the web makes it possible to deal better with unpredictable demand because you have an intense need for skill and then you don't for some years you want flexible staffing 
right the internet means that more companies can take a studio approach big bollywood studio big hollywood studios have full time employees to handle finance marketing and distribution but the creative side of the business the full time movie making stuff isn't very big so again what is happening in the in, the, in this paragraph the author is saying that the web work style basically uh, makes it possible to deal better the unpredictable demand so the first paragraph was about core competency and this paragraph is about dealing with unpredictable demand right and then i can go to the next paragraph it says web technology makes it possible for many different kinds of projects to be structured as a studio type a project owner who wants to assemble a team can go online describe the project and so on and so forth people and organizations with the right skills can declare their interest people looking for work will find more opportunities for employment the web can mediate the gathering of resources for a project a lot more efficiently than my people will go. so basically efficient gathering of resources can happen through web technology right let's go to the next paragraph despite the emergence of new flexible boundaries uh, big companies won't deconstruct themselves into per project production companies companies need to excel in consistent in house so lots of description for microsoft outsourcing has been a way to temper the expansion of our workforce and reduce our management overhead but it hasn't stopped the growth of our workforce the web work style in which each contributor of the company enables us to extend our so the author is basically talking about web style and how it is going to benefit right this is what i get from the paragraph so far then in the end it says medium size and small companies can take advantage of the boundary changing capabilities to to act much bigger than they are without adding employees so even mid medium size and small companies can can basically benefit a small company with the right expertise can bid on spearhead a movie production a construction project or advertising campaign by assembling other companies and profit quickly it can act as a virtual large company correct because of the team so the author basically has said spearhead means to lead spearhead means to lead so what is basically happening in the passage people if i combine all the paragraph then can i say that the author is primarily discussing how web style thing can benefit isn't it in short can i say that the author is discussing because i have to summarize the entire paragraph the passage was not difficult the language was easy the author was discussing about one issue all the while and that issue was basically the benefits of web technology and different people can benefit it in different ways microsoft can benefit like this small people can benefit like this you know and he give lots of examples let me go to the first question now when i look at the first question people i know that this question demands the understanding of the entire passage why because it says the passage aims to that means the answer is not given anywhere in the passage you have to basically understand the passage completely and only after understanding would you be able to mark the answer correct so it demands what complete yes it is a central idea kind of question so which one do you think is the best so it says elaborate on how digital technology can help a company reorient so is it only about core competency people describe how internet technology can be used by companies to utilize worker skills effectively without hiring worker in the long run so without hiring worker in the long run okay demonstrate the use of technology assisting technical support it is not focusing on this demonstrate the usefulness of digital technology in accessing technical support and employees but then technical support uh, demonstrate the usefulness of digital technology in accessing technical support and employees he is not talking about technical support as technical support and employees people in fact the author says that there has to be efficient use of manpower see in every paragraph this is this is this is again not it's it's technical support becomes very much restricted to only technology based companies but if you look at the hollywood example the author has given if you look at the it is not c c goes out first and point out that more and more companies will will be using internet technology in order to restructure their workforce but how but is he saying that more and more companies would be using the author says that the focus is not that more and more companies would be using in fact the author is saying that that it is it is it has many many benefits and if you say more and more companies will be using the author does not have a future tense in his mind there is no future prediction going on in the passage so the whole idea of marking will be is basically incorrect
Are you getting my point? When you say will be, that means the author is showing some kind of future trend, but the author is not concerned with the future trend. He is basically saying that that some kind of thing is benefiting someone and how it is benefiting, he is basically stating. So, I would not put D also as my answer. So, C goes out because of the technical support and D goes out because of the because of uh, the the tense aspect which says it, it is too extreme and then it says point out more and more companies i mean how many uh, company more and more companies would not be using as if more and more companies are not using see when the author says more and more companies will be using does he say that more and more companies are not using right now it is nowhere said that more and more companies few companies are using it right now in fact the fact that companies are using the author is able to write the article because companies are doing this right now so again D goes out. So you have left with only option A and B. A says elaborate on how digital technology can help a company re reorient itself to focusing on its core competencies and describe how internet technology can be used by companies. How many times people do you see the word core competency coming in the passage? That's what I'm telling you. Now look at these people just, just for a moment. What is the last paragraph about? Look at this. I am I'm going and pointing in every paragraph what exactly is happening. It says without adding employees or officers. That means what? Without adding workers, right? Or is it about core competency? Without adding workers, is it about core competency? No. It says that you can manage your thing without adding employees. Now I will go to the previous paragraph, right? Now look at this sentence, the previous paragraph. It keeps us from going big in the wrong areas and becoming ineffective through too much. What is too much of overhead? Too much of overhead means too many or too many people. Management overhead. Expansion of the workforce. So again, this is not about core competency. This is basically workforce getting managed efficiently. So let's go to the previous paragraph now. Correct? Decrease overall size. Again, the size factor has come into picture. Are you getting my point? Every company will experiment to find its optimal size. That means again size is the matter. So in every paragraph I get to see that the author is basically concerned about the employee workforce. Yes, what is happening in all the paragraph is technically happening is, uh, is, techni is, is technically what the entire passage is all about. You can't pick one idea from one paragraph and mark the answer. So, so this also focuses on the same thing. Again, unpredictable demand. Why? Because demand is unpredictable, so there is no need for you to hire too many people. Everyone, when they are done, they disband. Who are these they people? The workforce. So, when you are marking the answer, people, you must see the hint. I am giving you the evidence. And when you summarize the RC completely, you have the right answer. So, what do you think is the right answer? Is the right answer A? Is the right answer B? B is the right answer. Why? Because it says that utilize workforce effectively without hiring worker for the long term. So B is the best choice. It's not a difficult question. Because when you say core competency, it has come only once in the passage. And the whole idea of the core competency is the author says you focus on core competency, hire few people. Because when you focus only on, on core competency, you will have to hire few people. But if you focus on everything, you will have to hire more people. So in fact, the core competency idea is there to support the fact that the author wants to convey that have as few people as possible, not too many. And that is possible only if you focus on the core competency part. If you have been doing your RCs and if you have been practicing from the wrong person, you have not been following the right way of shortlisting the answer, you will never reach a point, you will find all papers very tough. And as a result, in some paper you will get 30 marks, in some you will get 10, in some you will get 40 and then as a result in the final day, you will end up getting 70-75 percentile. Are we clear about it, people? Shall I go to the next question now? Now, tell me, what is the second question? The studio approach would suit best that uh, best an organization that is? See, simple straight away. If you do this question correct, you can do this question correct. Tell me what was so difficult about it. People are crying. I'm not getting good marks. I have lost. I have this. I have that. 35 is the cutoff. It's a shame that 35 is the cutoff and people can't reach 35 marks when we have solved seven questions so far. 
and it's not even for not even 30 minutes yet we haven't crossed 30 minutes in the paper and we have solved seven questions and you say the paper is very difficult it's a fact based question the studio approach is best for people who are uh, uh, facing fluctuating workforce requirement the entire each and every paragraph is about that thing only because if i get the answer to this question correctly there is no reason why i should get this question incorrect because the answer to this question will help me get the answer to this question you tell me look for keywords look for the word look for the central idea look for what exactly is the core thing happening in the paragraph go to the next question now and i'm solving this question people you are now you're following see i have taken 10 seconds to solve the fifth question look at this which of the following types of professionals would definitely have an advantage if they work according to web style highly specialized people it could be anyone it could be from software company it could be not much demand so c goes out it could be anyone you have to be highly specialized and where is the answer given the answer is given in the paragraph it's a fact based question people say the paper was very tough we lost everything we might not do well in cat if they have highly specialized look at this people look people for work will find more opportunities for employment that meet their particular interests and requirements if they have highly specialized skills so again we have in in within 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 3 4 minutes we have solved three questions and we have got all correct i mean just imagine people say the paper was very tough i was i am wondering how can you say it is very tough look at the seventh question now which of the following can be inferred to be a reason why big companies do not deconstruct themselves the word deconstruct has come let's go back in the passage where exactly can you see this if you go back in the passage the word deconstruct has come here in this paragraph despite the emergence of new flexible boundaries big companies won't deconstruct themselves companies need to excel in consistent in house execution of their comp competencies companies need to excel in consistent in house execution of their core competency so they won't deconstruct themselves deconstruct basically means change and if you go down if you go down here you can arrive at the answer by elimination people what is so difficult about it it says here that their brand would do you think brand name is what the author has anywhere he hinted that the brand name will will will, will be will be affected adversely so b can be one good choice they have too much at stake in demand they have too much at stake in demand in demand in terms of overheads in fact the author says they should not go for overhead and you say they have too much of overhead so how can you mark c overhead basically means too much of responsibility because the workforce is very large but the companies don't want to deconstruct means what they want to focus on their core competency c is not the answer b is the best choice because they want to be consistent in what they are doing already use a common sense answer the answer is given in the second sentence why not d they are unlikely to ever does it show that they are that does it show that in the future they will always have projects does it show that does it tell that in the future they will always have projects nowhere given the future projects it has nowhere been mentioned in the passage people so you you have to go by what is visible to you it says that they would not deconstruct why because they want to be good in what they are doing a simple thing if i say i don't want to change i am happy with what i am so this this first sentence says what i don't want to change The second sentence says I am happy with what I am. Can I say that this is the reason and this is the reason of this sentence? I don't want to be I don't want to change. I am happy. So can I say this is the reason? Correct? You all agree, right? Now go to the passage. Go to the paragraph. Okay? When you go to the paragraph here, you look at this sentence. Despite emergence of new boundaries, big companies won't deconstruct. Companies 
need to excel in consistent in-house execution of their core competencies. Because they need to excel in this, they are not willing to deconstruct. They will just use technology to do it more efficiently. Every company will experiment with its optimal size. Though the dominant trend will be towards decreased overall size. Why? Because they want to be as efficient as possible. So the, the, only, thing, the only thing that I can see, the best option for me, is the option that we have marked. And even if this was a very difficult question, people, by you, by just by holding on to your common sense, you can mark this answer. Where is the brand name featuring in? Where it says there is too much at stake in terms of overheads. You will have too much at stake only when you will have the overheads. But the overheads are not there. The companies are trying to avoid the overheads by avoiding too much of hiring and too many people. So again, D goes out, C goes out. And you say they are unlikely to run short of projects. Where is it anywhere hinted that they will always have projects or they may not have projects? So can I go to the next question now? Which of the following statements regarding the web work style is true according to the passage? Now you tell me you can mark the answer. Everyone can use it. It is not more useful to X and not to Y. So A goes out. It says the web, the web, I mean, in fact, companies won't, won't, don't want to hire. Companies don't want to hire. See, when you say the web work style allows small companies to grow larger, in fact, the small companies will focus on their core competency, why they should become larger. So C also goes out. The web work style helps big and small firms, everyone in different ways, of course. It is given in the passage. Big firms can specialize in their core competencies and outsource the rest. And it has given in the last paragraph, it is given here, medium size and small companies can take advantage of the boundary changing capabilities. So everyone can benefit. Where is it mentioned in the last paragraph? The web work style is more useful to small sized companies. More useful. Understand the word more useful. Where is it given that they are more useful? Medium and... No, comparison is not given. And look at C says the web's work style allows small companies to grow larger and take on bigger projects. But where is it? Can you show me? If the companies are small and they can they can encash on the boundary capabilities, that means basically show me why are you marking C first of all? If you if you see any evidence for C, where can it is a direct question, correct? They're not growing large. By focusing on the boundary capability, they are taking advantage of their own situation. Nowhere it is said that basically by using web technology, small companies can become big. Then what's the point of saying that you focus on the core competency? It is assembling people, understand? By assembling other companies and professionals quickly, it can act as a virtual large company. And the team can be disbanded immediately. So it is a virtual large company only for a short while and how it is becoming a large company not by technically becoming a large company by having employees under its payroll yes virtual is the keyword technically what is happening that you are taking care of everything you are inviting everyone for a while virtual large company the project is done go out goodbye look at the last sentence smaller companies can use the web to scale without permanent mass that means it is temporarily happening. It is virtual, not, 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 uh, it is not technically and realistically becoming a big company. Yes, correct. Virtual basically means it is not happening in reality, but it is happening just. Out of these five questions, people, you could have easily managed four questions. Trust me. Don't you think? Out of these five questions, I can say, okay, one goes wrong. Can, couldn't you have managed four questions at least? Correct. And we have already, three is not again a bad deal. But I, I think ideally speaking, you should try for four. So my, my point is that if you manage four here and you have already managed 
managed manage five questions you can you can even you have already reached in fact even within the first 40 minutes you are already approaching 30 mark and you have already 20 minutes with you even at such a slow pace within the next 20 minutes you can easily finish one more rc and try to get at least 15 marks more yes yes it would be available always read the rc first people always read the rc first it is ridiculous to read the questions and then go and read the rc because you will start focusing not on the broader picture but all, all you will start looking for all these answers any question that has a broad picture go through the va first don't solve the va whichever is small and sweet solve it quickly and move ahead let's go to the next question now so this question has 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 four four options and the question says the author's attitude correct and the one question says that uh, uh, what is the title of the passage right so if i broadly understand the passage i can mark the rcs quickly correct if i broadly understand the passage because there are only four questions I can easily mark the answer. So I will read the questions first, right? I'm uh, sorry, I will read the passage first and then I will go to the question, right? It says there exists in the world all manner of political, religious and social movements which have their main objective of imposing what? Their view of reality, their particular version of the truth. You know? Often the object is to control an ever-increasing base of followers. They swallow large numbers of people in their ambition if their ambitions are realized in proselytizing campaigns designed to play on the common fears of the masses. Even if I don't know what it means, it doesn't matter. I am reading. I don't know. I don't know. Should I care about it? I know that what is the broad idea that there are vast number of political movements that absorb a good number of people. Whether I know the meaning of proselytizing, I should not care about it because I can't go for the dictionary and start finding the word. They observe that people are afraid, claim to know why they are afraid and they are and they offer a solution designed to allow these fears. So what is happening basically, there are lots and lots of movement that suck people in by luring them. Correct? Although the glaring example of this kind of structure is Nazi Germany, it is by no means the only one. So Nazi Germany is one such example, but not the only example. There have been many more examples. Eastern Europe under Soviet, Iran under Khomeini, Cambodia under, under Pol Blot. All these basically are dictators and the people have been basically, you know, under these people. It is possible to define nationless, nationless entities as well. For example, the religio politification of fundamentalist movements such as Shite extremes, Jews of Jews for Jesus, Black Muslims for uh, Louis Farah Khan. Uh, those that also bear close observation are Jerry Falwell and many other examples he has given. Who are these examples? The kind of people who try to capture the attention of the masses in a negative way can i say this should i focus too much on the example unnecessarily and waste my time some movement leaders such as x y and z define an enemy who must be destroyed an enemy defined as the source of primordial evil others like stalin see the see the evil in ideas and lifestyles and initially attempt convention attempt conversion in either case these movements begin out of moral imperative and change once they achieve power so these movements are there to achieve power Goodness is an early posture. Later, goodness is transformed into what? Destruction. So, initially, they try to be good and then they become basically destructive. The struggle for power is one thing. Again, the word power has come. So, basically, who are these people? The ones who are struggling for power. And uh, once they get the power, they start destroying people. One way these forces operate is by discouraging critical thinking and moral speculation in favor of what? Pre-packaged imagery and doctrine designed to create impressions rather than reveal substance. So, they try to get power in some way or the other look at this question the passage suggests that is it a simple question or a difficult question people i don't read the because they are repeating the information all the while i don't read the passage because they read they are repeating the information that's why you must be smart enough to find whether there is a repetitive information i won't do this question why you know I won't do this question because the passage suggests that means basically there are so many things the passage might be suggesting I don't have time to read and find each and everything 
I feel that this is this could be a good option. I feel that this also could be a good option. Religious groups differ in their working. This is not given anywhere. So D, D goes out. But the reason I don't feel like solving these questions is yes, it is it is a kind of inference base plus the answer is not directly given. Options are very close because I have to read everything and then carefully come and say whether this is true or not, whether this is true or not, whether this is true or not. Demagogues based uh, uh, public speakers, uh, speakers who don't encourage rational thinking. That is that is uh, that is what demagogues mean. Rebel rouser. So I would not uh, waste my time because I have already spent 40 minutes and I don't want to do this question and I waste again five minutes. Because I am also short of time, right? And I have seen that there are two questions which are doable. Which one is it? The title of the passage. Don't you think that the best title is what is majority, moral majority? Autocratic power is the best title. The truth is not there. There is no truth people. Autocratic power, you know, we are talking about people who are seeking power. I think A was the answer to 11. For, for the 12th one, the answer has to be autocratic power. Because the author has said that even institutions can have power. The passage is not only about dictators. If you go and have a look at the passage here, some movement leaders, some movement leaders, right? There's, there's one example the author has given here. The moral, I will, I will go up. Wait, wait for a moment, people. Just bear patience. It is possible to define nationless entities as well. What do you mean by nationless entities? For example, religio politification of fundamentalist movements. So even movements can have autocratic power, right? The Shiite ext extremists. Now, this is not a dictator. The Jews were not dictators. The black Muslims are not dictators. They are a group of people. They are basically fundamentalist movement. So how can you mark a dictator as the answer? Because dictator basically means you will only have people. But, but in the passage, the author has said that people also are dictators. In fact, communities and, and, and a group of people or movement can also have, have autocratic power. And he has given example of black Muslims and he has given example of all those stuff. So D, C cannot be the answer. And, and do you think the truth is the concern of the author? D goes out. B is the best choice. The moral majority. Are we talking about? Because my concern is power. And the way people are coming into power. It is not the, uh, the majority that is the concern. The author has said that it is the people. Again, if you read the entire paragraph, wherever you see, it is not the morality of the majority that is in concern. It is the morality of the people who are trying to attract the majority that is, in, that is the, uh, the core discussion of the passage. All the leaders are we discussing about the masses or are we discussing about the leaders you tell me the people right so if you are discussing about the leaders and the movement and the community people then why should I mark about the majority uh, moral majority and, and not of not the autocratic power Auto autocratic power could be achieved by the mass leaders or it could be achieved by the mass movement which are nation which don't have a national boundary and why has the author mentioned Jonestown don't you think it's a fact-based question Jonestown has come in the passage where is it you just drag up you'll find where Jonestown has come Jonestown has come somewhere in the passage I saw his name we know Robert Stern is here and if I go a little up here I feel I, I get the name there is Jonestown somewhere I have to read it wait We did see Jonestown. I was reading the passage and that's why you must be very good with spotting even if you have to read the passage again. This this is this is okay, this is where I get. Stalin Robertson, here we have. Jonestown, right? Here we have. 
goodness is an early portion later goodness is transformed into destruction as amply on by so who was jonestown he initially posed as a good guy and then he became evil right so which which option fits the best i this is a fact based question right misrepresentation you show that you are good and then you become evil jones what did what did jonestown did he showed that he was a good guy right and this goodness later on became what very bad so there was a misrepresentation going on right so b is the best choice mass isolate the reason of the mass conning it goes out simple answers b is the best choice easy question you tell me should you have got this incorrect why not a but is he emphasizing the he has given the example right you are again you see the answer but you don't want to mark the right answer it says here jonestown for example now what is jonestown's example for goodness getting transformed into destruction right if goodness is getting transformed into destruction and jonestown is an example of that that means initially he was good and later he became bad so what do you think is the right answer is it that misrepresentation is happening or is it the is it giving because if you say it is the danger of autocratic tendencies mr jonestown is not an example of a tendency mr jonestown is an example of a person who misguided people by being good so how can you mark that he is having a autocratic tendency here furthering a cause means what achieving a aim furthering a cause basically means achieving a aim tell me very difficult question and the last one says the author's attitude towards autocrat is what do you think is it pragmatic biased strong opposition he has warned at the end look at the last line of the sentence that that perhaps it is not yet time to for alarm but surely we must learn to recognize leaders with autocratic tendencies before they attain power before it is too late so what is this is it of rational criticism is it of strong opposition it's an op it's a warning it's an opposition you criticize rationally someone it is not it is not just criticism people criticism is mild he is opposing it he has mentioned words like hitler words like stalin do you think when you use these words you are expressing criticism or you are expressing opposition if you can't mark these kind of questions people rest assured that you are not going in the right direction how can you mark c in the presence of d an attitude towards autocrat d is the answer so you have four questions you could have left the first one you could have got all the three correct three correct in this passage uh, three correct in this passage four in the previous one and in the previous five va questions 5 plus 4 9 plus 3 12 12 questions so far and i am discussing and that's why we have taken one hour if you had gone alone with it you would have finished 12 questions in easily 40 minutes ka who says it is stuff people i i am just giving you the answer for the 12th 14th one is d per question 2 minutes not more than that not more than 2 times or 3 times maximum is it very tough people you tell me be honest do you think the pace pad the paper is so tough that you can't get 40 marks in the author is not the the author is asking the people to think rationally but what is the author's attitude towards those autocrats
very tough is it very tough people do you think it's really very tough tell me be honest do you think it's a very tough paper that we are discussing right now it's not tough it is not at all tough and then again you have one one prc which has one two three four and five questions four questions in fact and there is one more rc which is having six questions now i have a choice because i am ending the end of the i am reaching the end of the time i am i am almost having just less than 15 minutes so i would like to do the rc which has more questions so i would like to do this rc it has six questions in it people go by the question don't don't give more than 2 minutes to every question not more than 2 minutes on an average 2 to 1 1/2 3 not more than that yes i will take the passage now which has most number of questions this passage has six questions and i will take all the six questions and i will try to basically find the one which has the best answer now i am i am reaching the end of the passage right i mean i am i am reaching the end of the section i am my time is less than 15 minutes left so i would do the question which has maximum number of i would do the rc which has maximum number of questions correct so let me take this rc there are six questions in this let me quickly go through this and and start doing that which is i will read this quickly right so it says here art and truth used to be fast friends until the beginning of modernism the most admired quality in western art was mimesis objects in painting and sculpture closely resembling things in real life william henry fox talbot who produced the first photographic prints from a negative in 1839 immediately saw the mimetic a mimetic new medium as an art form talbot wanted only to be able to draw more accurately than by hand in fact he called his first book of reproduced photograph the pencil of nature for at least a century thereafter any photograph with claim to being art had its dna at least a few chromosomes from talbot's the open door a picture of a tree branch broom leaning just so aesthetically against dark doorway of course great photographers have never merely recorded visual facts like uh, like code stenographer they have selected their subjects carefully so great photographers have so it is all about photography let me go to the next paragraph right i will not waste my time reading the nitty gritties of something i know it's about photography i know about i know this is about the start of photography the historical period of photography soon photography escaped the exclusive grasp of the professionals who could afford its cumbersome equipment and the public began to take its own pictures when in the 1920s small and expensive shutter cameras came by 53 quarters of american families owned camera and took 2 billion photographs with them by the 1970s there were 9 billion pictures right and then it says that uh, the person who pointed his brownie at the woman in unknown photograph of 50s something and he or she couldn't predict that the result would be a great composition long fingers angular elbows set against the gentle downhill slope so it's about a photograph what the inadvertently great snapshot shared with the work of realist artist photograph like these these and these uh, so 40s and uh, dian arbus the 30s was that the people in them so the, the photographs in uh, the, the 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 people in these photograph mentioned in these lines were who they looked like raw bone farmers gritty miners harried housewives really doing what they looked like they were doing so realistically these were the photograph people were what they were in the in the photograph in the late 90s however something is changing now in the late 90s however the concept of fiction in photography reared its small its so fiction of photography came when in 1970s the big change in attitude from realist photography right was when metro pictures right showed cindy sherman in 1980 sherman's fictional self portraits right where in photography's first turn away from straight non fiction reportage most people think of as great photography but her pictures represented something new in the way that photography was considered as art it wasn't just for reportage anymore the talbotian aesthetic door was now fully open for the photographers to make photographs just as well as to take them the advent of digital technology only exacerbated photography's flight into fable that means that means basically from 1970s from being realistic art photography was becoming what a non realistic art it was becoming basically what flight into fable 
that means from realistic art it was gradually moving into non realistic or fictional form that is what, what i get from this entire paragraph so even i do i don't understand much of what is happening here i can simply summarize the entire paragraph for myself for my own convenience there is no need for me to lose enthusiasm why because the author is unnecessarily repetitive flight into fable basically means flight away from reality flight into fable basically means flight away from reality that is what it means we live in a culture dominated by pixels increasingly unmoored from corporeal reality that means unmoored means removed from corporal corporeal reality from physical reality movies are stuffed with gci and in such performance animations like beowulf overrun by them some big pop music hits are so cyberized right uh, as well as by telling you to press the more you know that you are party's extension even sculpture has opted so everything has become digital the author says why should photography be any different why shouldn't it give into the digital temptation to make every landscape short short look like the most absolutely so the author says that even photography will digitize as everything has become digitized photography is finally escaping from any dependence on what is in front of a lens but it comes at the price of its special claim on viewers attention as evidence rooted in reality as gallery material photograph are now essentially no different from paintings concocted entirely from an artist's imagination that means they have become unreal except what they lack what they lack paintings manual touch and surface variation as the great modern photographer model once said photography is the easiest art which perhaps makes it the hardest she had no idea how easy exotic effects would get and just how hard that would make it to capture beauty and truth in the same photograph so basically capturing beauty and truth is difficult right the next great photographers if there are to be any will have to find a way to reclaim photography's special link to reality the author says basically that photography has become too much fictionalized and they have to reclaim the link to reality means what they have to bring back photography to reality that means what photography should be about what is real and not what is fictional correct and they will have to do it in a brand new way that means where is the author's attitude the author's attitude is towards photography that is fictional digitized or to or towards photography which is real where is the author's attitude tell me real so it means the author wants photography to be real not fictionalized correct that's what he is doing at the end of the paragraph that new photographers will have to basically get back the reality now look at the first question what is the author's opinion regarding realistic versus fictional photography he thinks that fictionalization of photography results in losses of what unique essence so this can be one of the answers he thinks that fictionalization of photography has resulted in photograph becoming too much like painting but he has has he said that they have become too much like painting he has not said that it has become in fact he says that fictionalization has resulted in losing touch with reality so reality is the concern of the author and not so if i compare this with this the author would be more in favor of this option the author has said that because of digitization of photography has moved away from reality he has no way said that because of digitization photography has become like painting so the painting option would not be so good as option number this and he has no way said that photography should only report facts a and c are almost the same photography should be for reportage and photography should depict only what is in front of the lens reportage and what is front of the lens is the same thing how can you if you mark a then why can't you mark c and and has he said that artistry should be left to painting the author has said that there must be beauty and truth and isn't beauty and truth about artistry so how can you mark c the author has said right that beauty and beauty and truth must be captured so if he has said that beauty and truth must be captured then how can you say that artistry should be left to painting not to photography so d is the best choice are we clear about it people it's not a difficult question if you have got the crux of the matter it's not a difficult question because the author says that because of fictionalization 
photography has lost touch with reality and reality is the concern which the author is constantly harping on across the passage go to the next question it says here that which of the following photograph would the author most probably do? so the author says that he doesn't like fictionalization so if there is any fictionalization in the in the photography he would have disapprove of that photography right which option has fictionalization ordinary street scene he would not disapprove of this so a goes out a digitally enhanced photograph right so can i say that option d become the right choice straight away sorry option c how many seconds has it taken people tell me how many seconds has it taken to mark the answer if you have gone through the passage and if you leave the first question you can get this in 5 seconds 5 seconds i am telling you and you would say that the paper is difficult i am just pointing out around 10 to 12 questions which can be done in the in, in just 5 10 seconds the next question says inference question i would not bother much about it people it says here which of the following statements regarding photography is the only one that can be inferred it says in its earliest days photography was not considered an art form as it is now has it been said anywhere that it was not considered considered as an art form you know there is there is there is a strong hint for this realist photographer you know what i do i always use the date to arrive at the answer so i go for i i go and find the 19th century i go and find mid 20th century i go and find 1980 when i see the dates i read what what information i have about the dates and i get to know what exactly is the author saying that makes my job very easy so if i want to look what happened in mid 20th century i must find 1930 1940 1950 1950 correct let's go back and see where exactly i see these these dates correct these years with me so when i go back uh i see that this is what we have here right uh that what the inadvertently great snapshot shared with the work of realist art photographers so the work of whom realist art photographers and throughout the 30s throughout the 40s throughout the 50s throughout the 60s what was so common about them that the picture were about people what they looked like they were doing there was realism right they looked like what they were doing and what so if i have to mark the option wouldn't i mark most photo, realist photographers in the mid mid 20s chose people going about their daily routine as their subjects b is not mentioned most photographers and op, and the passage says great photographers go and have a look the passage says not most photographers the passage says great photographers people who have marked b they just go and have a look c is the answer in the 19th century we don't have most photographers we have great photographers and i will show you the evidence look at this here it says here that in the 19th century pictorialist photographers correct of course great photographers so it has great photographers it has pictorialist photographers it doesn't have most photographers so can i say b goes out people and the first paragraph is about the 19th century in the other paragraph i have information about the 20th century not the 19th century so if the answer is there it is there in the first paragraph or else the answer is just not there can i say that earliest days we can't find the answer in the first paragraph it is about great photographers not most photographers so this also has gone out cindy sherman but i have found this and therefore i would mark c i would not waste my time in disproving option d it has said that they were doing technically what they were doing so it is basically people doing about their daily routine 
read the lines people you will see it i don't i i mean if you take so much of a time i mean if you read these lines here what does it say here look at this realist ka matlab kya hota hai people what do you mean by realist photographer a realist photographer who would shoot his photograph or who would take his photograph from daily walk of life because i am a realist not a fictional guy i mean look at the word people always use common sense realist means genuine that means people who are who were doing genuine things they were the i mean uh, they were the subject matter of these photographers go and straight away mark option c don't take so much of time see people if you take so much time to think then you are not swift a manager a budding manager has to be as sharp you all want to be budding managers and you will start looking into don't become a scholar it says here realist photographer in fact even if i don't read the passage even then i can mark c as the answer because a realist photographer would choose ordinary people because he is a realist painter so he would show suffering he would show people going for their job for their work doing their duties photography is the easiest art which perhaps makes it the hardest anyone can take photograph but capturing beauty and truth is is in the same photograph of course easiest why because anyone can take photograph but why is it hardest because capturing beauty and this is difficult so can i say just by looking at this common sense example i can mark c as the answer tell me is it a difficult question how can you say that this is a difficult question and then go to the next one which of the following summarizes the fourth paragraph so you have to go and have a look at the fourth paragraph what does the fourth paragraph say here which one is it the fourth paragraph i don't know but there is a very simple question at the end which i must do first before i lose time the end question says choose the only option that correctly matches it's a match the pair question you look at the ears and you simply go and find the answer and i saw the 1920s i saw the 1920s i will go and i will show you where exactly i see the 1920s okay the 1920s had come in the paragraph here right in the 1920s small inexpensive fast shutter cameras like the kodak appeared right right inexpensive cameras appeared right if i go back to the option i see that the answer is given directly small inexpensive fast shutter cameras became available why commonly available because the author says that at the start of the 20th century people started having their own cameras so b is the best choice look at how we can infer this commonly this point was made by many people look at the sentence before soon photography escaped the exclusive grasp of professionals and moneyed hobbyists who could afford its cumbersome equipment and the public began to take its own picture soon photography escaped what the exclusive grasp and people began to take their own picture so can i say that the proximity of this sentence this at least has to be commonly available right you tell me that this sentence is placed exactly you know right you you all have learned para jumbles can i say that this question is logically connected with the previous sentence so if the author says that that photography escaped the exclusive grasp that means it was no more exclusive but it became commonly available so can i say that 1920 statement is correct now the billion picture statement will come to that also okay it says billion picture statement right look at the sentence what it says here that about 9 billion pictures a year are taken around the world 1970s 9 billion pictures taken around the world by the 1970s they were taking 9 billion pictures a year but then it is it is by the 1970s 
and around the world, right? By the 1970s or in the 1970s? What is the difference between the two? By the 1970s? When you say 1970s people, 1970s basically means 1971-72. And it is also about Americans. By the 1970s means basically 1970s started and until that time. So basically before that. There are two mistakes. First of all, you say 9 billion pictures a year. They were basically, the author is focusing particularly on America. And secondly, by the 1970s basically means until 1970. When you say by this time I was in US, that means basically this time before that. So it is not conveying the right meaning. It is an incorrect option. B is the best. Around the world. Again, people understand it is not around the world. The author has nowhere said it is taken around the world. By 1950, early three, nearly three quarters of American families owned cameras and took 2 billion photographs. By the 1970s, they were taking. So, they, who is they here? American families, right? So, how can you say it is around the world? American families were taking 9 billion photographs. So how can you say it is around the world? It goes out. Simple critical reasoning people. You are just missing the whole thing. How many questions can I manage in this, in this passage? Tell me. How many questions can I manage? I can manage the last one. I, can, I have left the one pre before that because I don't have time. I can easily manage the 30th one. 1, 2, I can manage this one, 3, the one, this fourth, I can easily manage 4 questions, easily 4 questions. I can leave the 2 because I am running out of time, I don't want to waste my time finding inference based questions. So I can take 4 questions in this RC, in the other 2 I have managed 4 and 4, so 4 and 3. So 4 plus 4, 8 plus 3, 11 plus 5 questions from the VA part. 16 questions are very much solvable, very very much solvable. Tell me people. So if I look at this, initially I solved 5 VA questions, then I went to 3 RCs. In each RC out of out of the first RC, so initially I solved 5 VA questions, then initially in one RC I solved uh, 4 questions out of 5, in other I solved 3 questions out of 5, in this I solved uh, 4 questions out of 6. I have left 2 because I am not sure. So I should say that this can be negative. So 4 plus 4, 8 plus 3, 11 plus 5, 16 questions, I can be dead sure. And if I am a very cautious guy, then I can say, okay, fine, I will not attempt 16, I will attempt only. I can still have time, I can do one more RC, people understand this. I can do one more RC of 5 questions. But we have had the discussion part, so we have taken so much time. But I still believe that the initial 5 questions, if we had not wasted time on the theta, we could have simply got five questions through para jump, sorry through para completion and through odd sentence so that would have been done in the initial 15 minutes you could have got these five questions by being very sharp and quick in the initial 15 minutes so this 15 minutes and after that you have three rc's 4 plus 3 plus 4 you would have taken 15 minutes here 10 minutes here 15 plus 15 30 plus 10 40 and then you 20 minutes i think is too much for this but still, if you take 10 minutes here and you are a bit swift, you can take one more RC. So I think that you could have solved 20 questions in this at least. And with 80% accuracy, you could have managed 16 into 348 minus 4 negative because of course I can give you some kind of thing. 44 marks out of 50, 53 marks has got 99% time. 52 marks has got 99% in this in this in this paper. 44 marks would have fetched you 95% Tell me, was it a very difficult? 